Hello everybody. Today I'm going to do a uh, installation video for my replacement Velo Orange um, steering damper. The prior one. <laughs> I need to take this hat off of here to not mess with my camera. The prior one broke off of right here when I, uh, well, just from a couple years of wear. So. Essentially for that, I just need a crescent wrench for this nut and a uh, angle. It's helpful to have an angled uh, Allen wrench because this guy right here is a little bit awkward to get to. So, just going to open up the package. This way you all know what's in here. In here is... The uh, spring body that, if I get this out of here, that might help with the lighting situation. The spring body that attaches to here, the cover for the spring body that just slides right over to help keep stuff from getting caught in it and making all kinds of problems. And so you might as well just put that on before you start doing anything else. <coughs> and then this is the bolt that's made to go through your fork right here. And since I've already had one installed before, I've already got the same screw in there. So this is a uh, extra piece. Then, in addition, This piece is what goes into the end right here on this little hook. On this hook, this slides on there, and then it this tightens it by screwing onto these threads. And the whole thing is held in right on here. So it's going to go through and install this. So first I need to loosen up the old bolt just so I can get the old piece off. Hi boy. If you guys can see him sneaking around back there. Our other cat Scotland. I'm sure Lady will make her presence known at some point. If nothing else she'll Meow, because it's almost dinner time. And, God forbid, there's any kind of delay. Now, because of the range of stuff I have on here right now, this is actually sort of a pain. So, I have to make sure to turn my fork a little bit more to get a better angle on this. And now I've got what I need to do <clears throat> make this happen. So I'll just keep trying to move, loosen the nut, loosen the nut. There that goes. There this piece comes, and I don't need anything else to come off of there. <coughs> so, well, I can assemble all this before I put it on here. Get in the sense this will just be easier if I do it uh, right now. I do it after because then I can actually, uh, yes, girl. <laughs> yes, you're attacking my, my toes through the spokes of the bike. So, put this here. Because, and the reason why I'm putting this right here, this is sort of a hard thing to see with the lighting. <laughs> this is dorky, but it'll work. So, the reason why I'm putting this right here, like this, is, man, no winning on this. Maybe this will be better. Is because 
to this angle, if I have it pointing downward, then there's range for it to go. If I have it pointing upward, then it's going to hit this ring right here. So that's just how I have to have it going. <coughs> so grab this, grab this, and at some point in the future, I'll uh, redo this and lubricate the uh, the threads, but with some poly lube, but I'm not going to make you guys wait for me to grab that. So I'm just going to start with hand tightening it, and then I'll uh, I'll finish it off once I'm sure I've got everything locked in the way I want. So now that I've got that on, just going to slide this sheath up a bit. Actually, I'm going to see if my helmet works well as a uh, lighting option. This, this stuff easier and better. Yeah, that'll work. <clears throat> so I'm just going to slide this sheath up right here. And the flopping around of the handlebar is frustrating, but also part of why I really want to get a new one of these on. There. So there that is. And then I grab the pieces. They're right down here. And this is again one of those things where it's like I just sort of look and go, okay, well one side has a hex nut opening, one side is a big opening for a screw, and so this side I'll slip in my screw. <coughs> on the other side I'll put in my my nut where there's space for it. And actually, since I, <coughs> oh, that's the wrong one. There's a little itty bitty black one. And thankfully enough, they do color code this, so it helps. As long as you don't lose something in your pants while you're sitting down. There it is. Again, good reasons for using uh, a bowl to help keep track of stuff, help hold stuff. But that was just me showing you where these things are because I need to not have any of that closed off or just fit this guy right around here. And there that is. Then I just do that. And then I'm going to slip this little nut right into here find whichever orientation makes it happy. Let's see. Come on. You can cooperate. There's no reason to be a little jerk about it. Yeah, that's a snug fit. Okay, so I'll just start threading this a little bit. Grab my multi-tool. Lazy man's, well, not lazy. It's a good way to deal with uh, not planning for each individual tool that I might have needed before starting this. So just to make sure I've got that in there a little bit. And the important little wheel. So now I just stretch this. And you should be able to still see this. Rotate that guy on there. And actually to start with, I wanna have it fully threaded on, but a little loose. And because I haven't tightened all this stuff, that's why that just slid up. Which, you know, it's actually good in the scheme of things. It means I can make sure I've gotten everything right first. So now that I've got everything, I believe the plumbing term is dry fitted. I'll just get this right here. I'll just get this right here again. 
put that right into the uh, Allen head on the other side of this bolt and start tightening this up while making sure that I don't have the, uh, the bottom piece turn out of being, you know, straight up and down. It wouldn't really matter, but it just feels wrong and sloppy to not have it be that way. And it probably puts extra tension on the spring, which from, so the, where this failed in the prior one is right up here, right at the uh, spring connection point. So that would seem to be where this fails. Um, I forget how long ago I did the last video for this, um, which was not too long after I bought it. But I think this lasted for two, three years, which, you know, considering it's all seasons bike that gets a lot of touring distance taken on it and about at least 5,000 miles a year, that's, that's not bad. I also have to make sure that I get this guy nicely put on because there is this front rack on the front that um, really wants this to be solidly on there. But I think that will be good enough for right now. I might fiddle with it more later. And now that I've done that, I'll grab my multi-tool again and stretch this guy down while making sure that it stays where I want it. And essentially, the more I pull it down, the more it's going to help make sure that I've got the tension that I want squared away. And then I tighten up the screw attaching the whole thing. And, you know, it's a relatively straightforward installation. If I remember correctly, the first time I did it, there was a little bit of spinner going, huh, I wonder, I wonder how I'm supposed to do this. Um, a little orange, at least in my experience, from having two things of theirs. This front rack, which I'll do a video on at some point, and um, this. They don't seem to include... I'm going to change over to a Phillips. Um, they don't seem to include instructions with the things you buy. You need to um, go to their website and see if they've got something there. And even then, it's sort of a little dicey as to what they'll have for it. Um, this front rack had its own kind of escapade to it, and since it's already installed, I can't, I won't be able to show you what, like, what I did live, but I'll walk you through it. Um, and there's a lot involved in that one. It was the kind of thing where I was expecting it to be like a 30-minute switch job and from one rack to another, and no, that baby took two, three hours. Um, but my experience can be your time saver. And, you know, Yellow Orange, I like their stuff. At least what I've had so far. And um, the this product, I'd say, is worthwhile to installing once in a while. And it's a good thing for practicing, for getting used to, like I've said on prior videos, the sense of empowerment and the capability to just be able to make things work and do things and uh now that i've gotten my steering damper on again and my bike will flop into me less less frequently now i should be happier and i hope that this video has been helpful for you and makes you happier as well oh also for those with uh slightly skinnier tubes it comes with a uh, a spacer ring as well so <clears throat> and something that I probably should attach as well underneath here, which is a, a rubber sort of frame protector. So I might just do that on the fly right here after uh, I sign off with you guys. But you don't need to watch me put that on. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks for your time and uh, bye.